Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll free. Toll free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, welcome everybody. This is Nevada Cannabis News and we are Weekend 702. We bring you all the news from Nevada and beyond. And to my right, I have Kurt Dukach. I have Raymond Fletcher, and I have Lady Rico Anayo. Blessings and love. So thank you for joining me in um, in the studio. And we'll be talking about the local news first. Lots of stuff going on, Raymond. Lots of stuff, right? Busy week. The, the week is just getting started, and you're absolutely right. It is going to be an extremely busy week. First off, kudos to y'all yesterday at the recommending committee for the questions you answered. Love that the meetings are broadcast live. <laughs> You know, um, you had the recommending committee yesterday, and yep. what happened at that? What happened with that bill? Did you uh, hear what he, uh, Councilman Coff was going to do with that? Well, um, the, at the recommending committee, they had um, what their proposed business license regulations for medical marijuana establishments in the city of Las Vegas. Um, the ones that I had uh, exception against was the the hours of 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. being the only hours of operation that they can, that the dispensaries can be open. This is a 24-hour town and you know what I've been sick at 2 a.m. in the morning and gone up and got to CVS and got medicine. What if you land at midnight uh, from another state and you need medicine and because you can't carry it on the planes and stuff like that you know you there are some really valid points with that that are just that are that are just being overlooked. You're absolutely right on that, and I really think that that needs to be reiterated because, and we will get to it, at another meeting, they were talked to that we are the only medical marijuana state that allows cardholders from other states to use their cards here. So that was a point pointed out at another meeting today. That's true. The reciprocity um, <coughs> issue means that when people land here, if they don't have medication on them, they need some way of getting it legally. And um, because we are a 24-hour town, we have, you know, we have stuff going on all the time. Uh, not, not only legally, though, but safely. True. We don't want people coming into our community trying to find their local drug dealer and getting something off of them because they need their medication. And because these places are closed, you're going to do worst-case scenario. This is what I have to do. You're going to get in a taxi and have him take it some back alley where he knows somebody who sells it is usually what happens. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Jeez, Kurt, have you done that before? (laughs) I've been in taxis before. (laughs) Oh, okay, you've been in taxis. (laughs) Um, the uh, the other point that uh, that I really didn't like, um, and this is personally, that there were no delivery services from these dispensaries in the city of Las Vegas. Now, people are ill. People need to get their medicine and, you know, and people need to be educated. And I recognize, you know, that you you can't always get to a dispensary. I know a patient who hasn't left their house in four years. We helped them get a card by by bringing a doctor out to them. But then there were still all sorts of other issues. There are people that are seriously bedridden, that it's going to be a huge issue for them to get to the dispensary. And delivery services would allow for safe access for patients that are truly patients. Yeah, and the caregivers can't be expected to do everything. I mean, just going and picking up the medication, the person you're referring to, their caregiver can't even go get groceries. They have to have their groceries delivered. You know, how's he supposed to go pick up medications? Yeah, for sure. The law does not limit us to uh, a nine-to-five lifestyle or locations on where we can access our medication. That's that's important first and foremost. But in in the city's defense, Mayor Carolyn Goodman said that she would be willing to revisit that issue after things have gone up and running. Now, I think that that's fair if you're willing to relook at it. However, what are you going to do with weed maps and where's weed then? 
Well, I was right at the end of um, of the city meeting. Bob Coffin and uh, Mayor Goodman said that these were going to be special use permits and so in being a special use permit then the hours of operation could be um could be uh modified to be 24 hours at that time but it's it you just don't start out 24 hours and, and i can respect that and i'm and i'm truly optimistic and hopeful that we we can urge and just like I'm going to urge all our listeners to go to the city council meeting tomorrow and help get these regulations passed, is to urge the council and the mayor to revisit this in 90 days. Let's not wait six months like they typically do. Let's get this up and going for 90 days and see how it, see see what tweaks we need to make at that point rather than making patients suffer. They've waited for well over a decade. This is true. This is true. And the last point at the city that I took exception to is that um, you cannot advertise any video, radio, or broadcast medium available to the general public. Um, You know, my argument was that how many people that are, you know, under 30 years old listen to AM radio? Actually, you said under 40, but good point. And good plug yesterday, by the way. (laughs) Well, well, it's not only that. It's all the restrictions they're putting on advertising. It's just like they don't want they don't want anybody to know that you're there, you know? I mean, I can understand the, the little flick, 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 flick cards. I can understand that. Yeah. But but come on. Uh, we're on the radio, and we're, uh, we're talk radio. It's not going to be, you know, Bucky the Dancing Doobie or something, you know? <laughs> hey, you never know. That may fit within their guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. But you're absolutely right. And, and Kurt, you know, um, you can't even make lighters, T-shirts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you cups. can't. You can't have anything. You know, this is this is a tourist town, and tourists come here, and they want they want souvenirs of their trip. And you know, T-shirts from these dispensaries would be a hot item and a huge. And, and you know, another business, you know, another local business that making T-shirts for these people. That's more money into the community. And it's like, why are we so afraid of this? And why are we afraid of creating jobs? Exactly. And wasn't it one of our elected officials, I can't recollect whom right now, I'll behave, who said that they would like Las Vegas to become the Amsterdam of the West? I remember that. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> that, that would be wonderful. I think that there would be a lot less vi- fighting at these city council meetings. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, a lot less people drunk on Fremont Street, I think which is great, another problem they're dealing great with. Great for our economy. I mean, imagine. The Amsterdam of America. People would come from all over the world and just feed our economy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean... It's hotel rooms, mm-hmm. it's everything. We lost, we lost a lot of business when Macau got up and going as a gambling, as a gambling uh, mecca because a lot of uh, the tourists that were coming over here and gambling now feel that, you know, Macau is just is closer to where they live. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we lost a huge huge part of that gambling industry maybe we can regain it by being you know i completely agree i think i think that's got the glitter and gold that we need to draw everybody back to las vegas well can you just imagine the marketing plan if, if you partner up with uh, the las vegas uh, visitors bureau you know and you know you get these heads and beds you create jobs you know we're las vegas the thing about vegas is we're always reinventing. We're always revamping ourselves. And just because gaming is not as big as it once was does not mean that we cannot be the entertainment capital. And that's what they're gearing towards. And part of entertainment is having these coffee shops, having these dispensaries, having these places. And, you know, let everybody come and do something besides getting drunk and fight on Fremont Street or in the Strip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, the last thing on Las Vegas, um, Las Vegas was that uh, you cannot give away cannabis. Now, this is in direct violation of what the legislative intent said. The legislative intent said how much you give back to patients. Wait, now, wait so you can't give it away? Yeah. I can see not selling it, but 
give no, it away. You, gifting it. You can't like, even give discounts on it. You can't, you can't even, even advertise twenty five percent off today. Nothing. You nothing. Know, wow. no. Nothing to locals. Nothing to da da da. No, you know. No rewards programs. No anything rewards like that. programs. So it's not even like you get you buy four eighths and you get the fifth one free. You know you can't do any any of that. Any of no. that. And but the thing is, the state legislative intent said. We had to have a charitable give back to the community. Of course, it didn't say directly that you you need to give cannabis back. But if you're growing, if you're a growing and not a dispensary, like a cultivation. It's your top resource. What are you, it's your top resource. If you can't give away your top resource and now you have to give cash back or, or something else. And, and well, I, I would like to remind people right now, though, they could give to Weekend 702. We are 100% <laughs> tax deductible. Not, I mean, not like I'm trying to take anything away from our charitable organization, but to, to me, I give it away to patients because you know what? That is the most radical act that I think that I can Amen. do. Amen. Yes, and there's radical a, love, radical. And, and be the change the, that you seek. A lot of the business owners in this, they're, they're very compassionate people, and they want to give to the patients who can't afford it, and to the veterans who've served our country. They want to give it to them. You know what? It's not. It's not about making money. It's about taking care of the patients. And you're restricting these businesses from literally helping. Th- thousands and thousands of people. The people that they're supposed millions, to be, I think. The, the people, people they're supposed to be serving and that these laws are supposed to be serving are now being cut out of this by saying you can't give free p- product to patients. Yeah, we but can't pe- we can't have price wars and freebies and that. You know, that's the patients that benefit from that. Because these people have been opposed to the process since jump. They don't want this. They don't want this in their community and they're going to do everything possible to make it difficult to access your medication or anything else but you know what thankfully though jen if we did live in san jose Mm -hmm. voters today could get free medical marijuana right on (laughs) tell me about it that's a voting incentive no kidding live in san jose (laughs) california want free weed then get off your butt and go vote like now Several of the San Jose Mar- Medical Marijuana Clubs have joined in to create the Weed for Votes program, which Silicon Valley Cannabis Coalition Director John Lee isn't geared at getting support in any particular measure or official. What he just wants people to do is get up and vote. He says they have a huge opportunity to make an impact on who runs San Jose. You know, and with predictions of one of the lowest voter turnouts in history, um, it would be today. You know, cannabis supporters could have a huge effect. And we, and speaking of, we have seven days. You have seven days from right now to go vote. If you have not voted, then you need to. Then you need to be the change that you wish to see for sure. Yeah, get out there and vote early. It's so easy. You don't have to wait in any long lines or anything. They're they're all over. I have it posted on our on our Facebook page. Uh, they're just they're all over town. It takes about five ten minutes of your time. I know, Jen, you voted. Kurt, did you vote? Yes, I did. I voted. I was uh, I was on my way to the to the advanced gardens to pick up some supplies, and uh, <laughs> they were closed, and I had 15 minutes till they opened, so I was going to go grab a hamburger or something. Instead, I saw a big voting booth and said, hey, better, better waste of my 15 minutes and, you know. So for all of the uneducated people that want to get involved in the voting process, what's the deadline? When do we have to vote by? You have to be registered for, to vote. First of all, and then you have to vote by June 10th. June 10th. I'm yes. registered, so thank you. Yes. June 10th is election day, is, is what you say, but early voting in Saturday. Is that not correct? Early voting in Saturday, so get in if you want to do early voting. And I recommend it. It took me five minutes and nobody was there. So Awesome. Yeah, there was two in people there when I went. I, I, I can um, say that only two people have uh, asked for my vote. I know uh, Dr. Fry was one of them. And he's the only candidate that that has, you know, actually sat and talked to me about why he's running, you know, and what he wants to do. And not only that, he's been a big supporter of medical marijuana. So I know that that's one candidate I plan on supporting. Me personally, let me make that (laughs) clarification. I'm not trying to speak for anybody. I guess I should put that there. And um, another young up-and-coming guy is uh, J.T. Creedon. J.T. Creedon, huh? J.T. Creedon in uh, the ten, uh, Assembly 10 race. Okay. And well, I know I know um, County Assessor uh, Warren Warren Burnell or Hardy Burnell. And, and I know him just because he's a friend of mine. Yeah, so. he's a very good guy. 
So. I don't know any of the county people. None of them, none of them came and said hi. I'm so and so running for this. Nothing. So, well, you, we did host a few meet and greets, and you know, a few people came here and there. We we put the invitation out to just about anybody who was running for any office to come on out and talk to the people. You know, we can as a nonprofit can't endorse any candidate or anything like that. We all have our own personal opinions, but we feel it's important to bring the candidates to the people so that the people can ask the questions they want to know. Yeah, and be educated. Uh, speaking of educated, I went to Pahrump today. <laughs> I went to Pahrump County meeting, and they were talking about their, uh, their licensing process for medical marijuana. And I will tell you, it's refreshing. There were no, there were no um, security screenings, and half the people had guns on their hips. <laughs> So yeah, it's amazing. They awesome. open carry in the in the commission chambers. It's like the modern wild wild west. It, it was, it was, and it was just and and they were talking about dispensaries and you know and getting dispensaries going in Pahrump and there's only one going to be allowed in Pahrump in Nye County, all in of Nye, Nye County, all of Pahrump. Nye County. And for those of you that don't know where Nye County goes to, Nye County goes all the way up to Tonopah. That's about. 350 miles north and it wraps around us like a little blanket on the west side and comes in behind us just a little uh, just a little bit of Las Vegas so it kind of wraps around Las Vegas and Nye is huge huge so they're making it like a Walmart right for, like a weedy Walmart, right? <laughs> they better. I mean, yeah. trying to cover all of that area with one dispensary is ludicrous. Yes. Yeah. Well, no. What the every it forces everybody, or everybody can grow their own still. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of people out there. It's kind of evident that grow their own, and uh, there's co-ops and that, and the co-ops don't want want uh, the dispensary near them because they're afraid that they'll come in and mess up with their co-op. So. Well, it, it, I think it's up to each individual community how they want to have their medical marijuana program ran. Mm-hmm. What's good for one community may not be good for the other. So, and that and that's a good point. We've got these state guidelines, but we've got these state like guidelines, but we are coming back to what's best for our community. Um, the the other thing is is that they would uh, allow so many cultivation. Um, places in Pahrump, uh, or in Nye County, sorry, that includes like Aramagosa, places like Indian Springs, stuff like that. They only allow, um, you know, they're going to allow so many cultivation places and they're thinking about like four and I'm like, you know, not if they can export their product, you know. if yeah, it, because Go for as many as you can. For sure. But the good thing is that now everybody that's in Nye County that's not 25 miles from this dispensary can grow their own. So I, I'm thinking that uh, that Pahrump is going to have a big jump in population yeah. of people are just time, like, time you know what? Time to buy a house. Time to buy a house. It's cheaper in Pahrump. <laughs> they, they got a Walmart. I can grow my plants in Pahrump. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> awesome. Exactly. There's other things you can do in Pahrump that you can't do in Clark County. That's true. That's true. So uh, let, on that note, <laughs> we'll come back and we'll be back uh, to our 420 wow, wow. moment. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Weekend 702 is a Nevada cannabis community. We are a 501c3 nonprofit that meets in Southern Nevada. We are a social group that started in Las Vegas for patient support. We've been active in the community for over five years. If you'd like to join us on any of our events or parties, please contact us through Facebook at Weekend 702 on Meetup at www.meetup.com forward slash weekend 702 our website is www.wecan702.org be a part of the nevada cannabis reform revolution please join us and donate today 
Locally owned and operated TSI Total Safety Incorporated has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000. That's 702-967-0000 or visit us at TSIVegas.com. Hello, welcome back everybody. This is our 420 moment. For our 420 moment, I'd like to talk to you uh, about a local celebrity Miss Lady Rico. Aloha. 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 Welcome for having me. Thank you for having me, actually. You know, and she has been one of the supporters in the community for the longest time. Every time that we're throwing some kind of a benefit or a bash, they've uh, come in and, and, um, and, and helped us make the party complete. And we'd like to thank them for, for coming out and doing that. And you've got some dates coming up. Yes. Um, you know, we're, we're creating awareness and passion and motivation for our cause through music. Um, it's a really big passion of mine. Our next show is going to be June 7th. It's, it's a this, free show. It's a free show. It's this coming Saturday at LVCS. That's the Las Vegas Country Saloon. It's on Fremont, Carson and 4th Street, Las Vegas Boulevard in that area. Um, we're going to be playing with some awesome bands from Southern California. We've got the B-Side Players, also known as Maiz in Mexico. Maiz. Yes. Okay. And they're, they're one of my favorite Latin reggae bands. We've also got Brewfish coming in from Southern California, um, as well as Lady Rico and the Sin City Prophets and Florencio Rupley Jr. So it's going to be an awesome, awesome show. Free. Can't miss it. That and you know, and that's great. It's local free music. You support the community by going out and seeing local shows. I don't know how many times that I've gone to places and f- to pay fifty dollars a ticket, people will pack that place. I go in to see a free show, and you see people just kind of not many people. And and I, I you know, what is what is about that phenomenon in Las Vegas? You think, Reiko? I think that you know, um, our community is really starving for a little thing called unity. You know, I think there's a lot of um, a lot of bickering and a lot of haterism that goes on. And, you know, people forget what the common cause is and that we're all in it together. And I think I think that if we all realize the common vision and the common goal and unite, the power in numbers will will make us invincible, unstoppable. You know, and you know, and that's true. Um, and the type of music you play it just is about unity, about about job. I, well, I agree. You know, the funny thing is this extends not only to our cannabis community, but as well as the reggae community. And, you know, we we as reggae artists do sing about unity, about love. But there is also that competition and that, you know, false sense of, of what the bigger picture is. Like you and I have kind of talked about this before. Um, I... You know, I was really down a little while ago about people hating on me and, and, you know, I just I just kind of was just ignored it and I keep ignoring it and rising above it and rising above it because, Mm -hmm. you know what, my focus is not on somebody calling me names or calling me nasty stuff. My focus is on cannabis, about patience, about getting this process through Nevada and getting workers and and people working. Because, you know, you understand the laws of attraction. You attract the things that you think about. You attract the things that you say. There is so much power in words. So, you know, even if you're angry at someone or you don't agree with someone, uplift that person. You know, they, they're your brothers, they're your sisters. And, you know, how would you like it if someone hated on you? Well, you know, and you know, if you're Christian or you're, you know, Rastafarian or whatever, it's, it's known as grace. And, you know, you grace under pressure. When people are when people are hating on you, the best thing you can do is smile and say, you know what, you've got this great project going on, and I'd like to talk about it. Well, you know, they say your your character really shows um, in the way that you act when no one is looking. So uh, always do the right thing. For sure, for sure. So that was our 420 moment, and thank you for thank you for chiming Rest in. And you're, all right. stay with us for the rest of the program. We'd like to t- uh, talk to you more. But speaking of, spe- you know. Everything going on, Clark County Commission meetings, back to back to back to back. 
um, this week, Clark County is hearing all of the dispensary application um, applicants, and they get six minutes to tell why they are different. Yes, six minutes to say how good you are and you know, try to make a case for the fact that you should have one of these businesses. And then the public, you have to, well, if, if you're going to be in opposition to any of the applicants, you have got to have a speaker's card filled out before noon tomorrow. For any of the applicants over any the three the days? Any of the applicants. Over three days, though? By noon tomorrow. Okay, so... For the, rather be, their hearing is on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. You've got to fill out a speaker's card. They already have over 430 some in opposition to the applicants. Oh, my. Oh, my. So here's the process. So all the haters have, have jumped on board. <laughs> and what Chairman Sislak found out or was uh, determined at, at the end of the near 90-minute conversation on just the update on how the application process is going to work, they spell, spelled out everything, what they want from the applicants, what they're going to do, and they're... They're handing out cones, but not for ice cream. Now, you were telling me this about this earlier, and it almost sounds like Meet the Falkers. You know where they, where they said, you, this is my circle of trust? Now, what is it called? The Cone of Silence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. And from noon tomorrow until the commissioners make a decision on the applicants, they are going to be in a, quote, on quote, cone, cone of, of silence. silence. Dun dun dun. Don't ask them. Don't they won't tell. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> the cone so, heads. Exactly. So yes. here's what that means. Okay. No applicant. No lobbyist. No applicant representative. No one related to any application may converse with any commissioner on this topic until their decision is made. And and when does the cone of silence go down over the commissioners? They become cone heads at noon tomorrow, <laughs> unless they lift the veil themselves. Mm-hmm. Unless they state they're lifting the veil, whatever the heck that means. Okay. There's a cone of silence. Okay. Well, I was gonna so s- it's an, it's an indefinite code of silence until whenever they do until stuff. they until they either vote on the dispensaries until they make their decision. Or until they voluntarily lift it themselves. Got it. You know, I know, I know one Clark County commissioner that's happy about that. It, that would be Lawrence Weekly. <laughs> I saw him at a Jefferson Jackson dinner, and he was just like, "Don't talk to me about this." I saw him there too. He <laughs> he he is fed up. Uh, Chairman Sisolak is 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 beyond fed up, and I believe it was uh, Commissioner June Kiliani was the one that uh, uh, suggested being coneheads. So, next time, next time I see uh, Chris, I'm gonna have to laugh at her about that. But also, so the applicants, there's going to be two rows set up on the left side for the applicants, their representatives. They only want one individual from the application coming up. They don't want somebody back to back saying the same thing over and over. They mm-hmm. don't want to hear, "Oh, I got the best gardener. I got the best this. I got the best that." Chairman Sislak stated, I've been hearing you've got the best thing for so many days. I'm tired of it. Yeah, you know, I actually was in meetings with the commissioners last week um, when they didn't have a code of silence. Um, And what they are looking for specifically is what makes you different, what makes you shine. How have you already given back to the community? Not what you plan to do, not what you think you can do. What have you already done? What what are your specific steps? And I've got to actually talk to a few people this week because I've seen the weekend name on a couple of applications who they have not done anything for the patients or we can or given yeah, anything supported us at haven't all. supported haven't us any, at all any donations any donations and they're putting this on the applications i'm gonna be there just to say you know what this application is invalid somehow because they, they they're putting us on their application as some kind of give back and i never seen these people before i'm gonna tell you right now before i finish telling you about these requirements oh, okay i'm about to become the most hated man in clark county why I am going to get up and object to every single application. Really? 
the process. It's not the applicant. It's the process. I've reached out to my county commissioner. I've reached out to the chairman of the commission. I have not heard back. I don't think it's fair that they got to change their applications because they didn't follow what the gaming board said. I don't think so many people were left out because they they got left out because they didn't have the opportunity to bring their applications back. And there's so much. So it's not against the applicant themselves. It's Mm -hmm. against the process. Not only that. Kurt brought up Marlon McDade Williams being on uh, Rawson last week, and mm-hmm. I watched that interview. And Commissioner Weekly and Commissioner Sisla both brought up that point. Now, they kept saying, "We're going to send the applications. We're going to pick eighteen and send them." Oh no, they're not. Marla stated in that interview, "The county is not sending us squat." Yeah, she said no municipal, no municipal. They come from the applicants themselves. themselves. Yeah. So here's what's going to happen. I'm sorry to cut you off, Kurt, but here's here's what's going to happen. They're going to reject somebody. Okay, the state's going to improve it. We as taxpayers are going to get bent over again because we have to pay for some lawsuit because they didn't want to follow whatever process and think that because you're at a local level yes you make the decision for your local rep- residents absolutely but the state is the one that had their guidelines out the state as the gun said this is how we're going to accept them so what are you going to do when the state accept ones and the county or city says no you know what that's an interesting question and, and i can see a lot of battles maybe happening over this especially through county mm-hmm. because their county has not been guaranteed 18 dispensaries no matter what they say and yeah. they didn't go through the process to get the other eight they just said we're taking them we're, well That's yeah right. and and you know actually the the process was to petition the state they said that they made the 18 recommendation by that's where the majority of um, the residents were is in Clark County. And and therefore, that's why they deserved 18 applications. But you see, if a more fair process would have been how many patients are in Clark County, not how many people are in Clark County. Not, not only that. Okay, so they're they're hearing they're hearing these dispensary applications. So each person has six minutes to come in. You lay out your case. What makes you different? Da da da. Whatever it is. Okay. Next, you have three minutes by the county commissioners. Not three minutes each. Three minutes total for all seven of them. And then two minutes by whomever opposes you. And you don't get to rebut or anything. And it goes to the next person. Now. What that person they're they're not they're not doing the vertical integration application at the same time, which is wrong. You know, there are a lot of things wrong with this process. And had they would have sat down and had a community meeting on what the pro- proper way to go through it would been, it would have been a lot easier than than what they're doing now. Well, they had recommendations. They had recommendations from uh, people that got policy from uh, the state policy institute, like in California. It was a California process. But it was a merits-based application that, uh, that of course, now the rubric is up at the state. This is what we're doing, this merits-based application. But then the municipalities were just supposed to talk about zoning and business licensing, where they're going to allow them, where they're going to zone them. It's now like almost going to be like like a little battle. The same thing happened per, in Pahrump. They were, they were saying, we don't want to send everything up to county. We just want to send the ones that we want up to county. And and then that's, I mean, not county, up to the state. To the state. Sorry. <laughs> and that's where they're going to get in trouble. Because if they have four people applying for a dispensary in Pahrump, and they only send one or two, okay, first of all, the state is messed out of their application fees, which is not going to make the state happy because that is how they are funding this program. this pro- the program. And Clark County said they've collected nearly a million dollars from the application process alone. I know. So if they only send what they want up to the state, then the state's not going to get, get their full their full due, and they're not going to be able to make this a, what where, what is everybody calling it, a robust industry? Because we're not going to have the backbone for that. They were counting upon the applications going to state and then the ones that are okay in state, you know, they get these provisional licenses and and then they get and then they get to fix it into eight for 18 months into the municipality. Well, I believe that it was designed to have the applicants were supposed to apply to both the county and the state. And there was supposed to be a liaison that worked between them and. 
agreed upon the best for both is how it was originally intended but it, they kind of forgot the the county end of it and the state just kind of put their merit-based program in and left it at that well no, uh, well the state had their they had their guidelines but then what was going on in the counties is they were making their guidelines and that's all they were supposed to do make your guidelines don't yeah, make your the application and... process you're supposed to make your guidelines they made the guidelines of the state they're supposed to make their guidelines at the municipality and then the applications go up to the state and the municipality and the state works together to find out what's best for the community and and it's basically becoming a, a little tug of war which, by the way, the state has announced their application process, yep. and I would wholly encourage anyone, and this is what I've said, said to even uh, my clients, too, is forego, forego the city process. Those that were excluded, that got rejected from the county, I, I don't support suing, but I'm going to encourage them to. I want you to sue. You got rejected. Okay, go through the application process. Start with the state. Yeah, if then you've go got back. a good enough application, put it in with the state. The state says you get a, you know. Then, then do, because Marla also said in the interview that the uh, state only opens the application process once a year. The municipalities has the opportunity at their leisure to open up the, their application process. And did I already say the state uh, announced their application? Yes, yeah. okay. they so announced their application. Between they announced their process. The application is online and everything. Yep. Yeah, and, the, and the application uh, process is going to be august 5th through the 18th i've already have mine started filling out good for you good for you well that's about it for the local news we're going to go for a break and and we'll be back in just a few moments Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. Welcome back, everybody. We're um, on to our uh, nationwide news. This is Jennifer Solis for Nevada Cannabis News. And I've got Kurt Dukoc in the studio, Raymond Fletcher. I've got uh, Lady Reiko and William She's Beach so Baker. Thank Isn't you. she? She just shines. And her voice is wonderful, too. I, got, I just posted uh, one of her videos on our Facebook page, We Can 702. It's got a link to her, uh, her Yes, I video. So oh, if you haven't you checked so her much. out yet, please go on there and check it out. And then maybe they can hear you play that live when you play. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, well, nationwide, what's going on? Um, the U.S. House of Representatives has voted to cut off funding for federal raids, arrests, and prosecution in states where medical cannabis is legal. Yay! Yay! Um, oh thank my gosh. you. Through that metro, there's the end of the gravy train. <laughs> <laughs> well, th- um, so I'd like to Lombardo. think. I'd like to thank everybody for taking action by calling and emailing your representatives. Together, um, we can make a difference, and we have made it a difference. Uh, by a vote of 219 to 189, the Republican-dominated House approved uh, the Ro- 
Roha brought your Afar amendment to the Commerce, Science, and Justice Appropriations Bill. Um, that's the vehicle that funds the Department of Justice and the and the Drug Enforcement Administration. Yay! So um, basically, we're not going to declare outright victory. Um, we, this is going to be a tough fight, at, you know, to continue this. But it's getting something through Senate and onto President Obama. We hope to do that this year. And I, and I, you know, I, it is my hope that President Obama declassifies this or puts it to a class two or class three controlled substance before he leaves uh, office. That's that's my hope. What do you think the chances of that are, Raymond? Well, first, I'm proud to say that all of our uh, Congress members uh, voted for that amendment. The mm-hmm. Rohrbacher, what was that, Far? Rohrbacher Far. Yeah. yeah. And um, with respect to your question, I think he's too busy freeing terrorists to uh, worry about us little people. <laughs> Well, on a hopeful note, <laughs> that's exactly the bang he needs. That's exactly what he needs to go out with a favorable bang. I, I, I would say. You know, I, I'm I'm also um, I'm also in that mind that that's what he's going to do right before he leaves. Is that's going to be his legacy? I think it's really likely. You know, um, the way that our our our, our prohibition process is going right now, I, we're we're really, you know, heading on the on the verge. To completely end it, I think you know we're we're completely legal in in Colorado and and Washington. Yep. you know the so times are changing. I don't think it's it's too far fetched to consider. I really don't. Well, I'd like on on another um an, you know another annual and nationwide note. It's the fifth annual Hemp History Week, June second through the eighth, twenty fourteen, um, at weekend we're going to be out at first friday and we're going to be giving away um nutiva hemp seed samples they are organic they are nutritious they're gluten free they're gluten free <laughs> exactly we're also going to have some dr bronner samples all day. we also have dr bronner oh, you samples guys got all the good stuff it's like every hippie's dream what it is it smells like patchouli and you know and uh and uh, uh what incense around our booth for yeah. this for this month for sure yes, and we'll also have free ice water you know because it is going to be hot out there so you know make sure you stop by our booth in front of the uh the artifice and uh you know get get some ice water and you don't get dehydrated out there while you're having fun i'll be hanging out there with you kurt friday and uh, i believe we're also going to have someone there also collecting signatures sig- signatures for uh ticks ballot initiative for for, for uh responsible mm-hmm. adult use that that'll either go to the general assembly, and if that fails, it'll go on the ballot in twenty sixteen. Yeah, the the consensus is it'll probably fail in the assembly, but it'll go to a vote. And people. and that's what I'm I'm thinking. Uh, on, honestly, sarcasm aside, is uh, it won't happen before he leaves office. That's going to be a big issue in the twenty sixteen election. I mean, we already have twenty two states plus a district that allow medical. By then, it'll be like close to thirty. So. Well, um, you know, speaking of New York, New York State Assembly easily approved a law legalizing medical marijuana last Tuesday, and there appear to be enough votes to pass similar legislation in the state Senate. Um, the Assembly bill passed uh, on a 91 to 34 vote uh, that would allow possession and use for up to two and a half ounces of medical marijuana by patients certified as seriously ill. It would permit uh, dispensaries to deliver the drug to registered users users and give their caregivers a system designed to prevent abuse or illegal uses by the drug. More news out of New York is that they are moving forward with CBD only clinical trials. Um, I always caution people um, in the CBD, in their little CBD fervor, that CBD works um, synergistically with With THC. THC, Yes. yes. Everybody should know that, but they don't know that. And, and and the thing is, is that when you take one part of that pie out, it, you know, it doesn't make a whole. Just something you have doesn't an work. incomplete formula, so it's just not effective. Well, and the other thing that people don't seem to realize about THC CBD combinations is that the CBD calms down or or tamps the, down the THC effect or the high effect. But another thing that people don't realize is that if you don't heat 
the product. If you don't heat the the flour, if you don't heat the keef, if you don't heat it, it's THCA. And it and the A chemical is knocked off at when heat is applied, and that's what makes the euphoric effect. So in THCA, if it's never been heated, is never going to get you high. That's right, unless you <sighs> decarboxylate the, the matter or anything. Yeah, so, I mean, I can make a tincture that you can put under your tongue. Totally will not get you high. You don't even think anything about it. You Stop put your it, pain. And you, put so it on a, you put it on a joint or, and let it dry. You smoke it, out of your mind. So, like, if I were to eat, let's say, a big nugget. Yeah. Never heated it. I, it wouldn't do anything to me. Maybe heal me from the inside. Yeah, you Correctly. still get the healing benefits, but you won't get the, the, the high or the euphoric feeling from it. That's why so many people um, uh, with Ehlers Downlow syndrome, um, it's it's like it's a, um, a genetic disorder that that will cause muscles to rip. They will juice it. They never get high, but you use so much. It's like how can you go through three ounces a day? Easy, juice it. And and these people are never getting high, but they're curing themselves with the plant. It's amazing. So in, in New York, that's what we've gone um, on to. South Carolina it has passed something similar. The governor approves a limited CBD-only medical marijuana bill. The governor of South Carolina has approved a restricted CBD-only bill in law uh, into her state. Uh, Senate Bill 1035 will allow certain qualified patients. They can be in part in a CBD-rich oil uh, from other states. And then the bill sets up clinical trials at the University of South Carolina. Cannabis not, would not only be able to be cultivated, um, though it will not be able to be cultivated. The, the bill does leave it a possibility open different down the line for federal approval. Who is that, uh, Nikki Haley state? And Nikki Haley. That, that's looks huge. looks like Haley. Yes, it is Nikki that Haley. That is huge. It was... Especially um, out of the South, South Carolina? Yeah. That is... That that's is that's huge. pretty radical, yeah. I mean, that's 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 the Bible Belt right down there. That that's big. I mean, well, well but you can see, you know, how conservative they are. I mean, CBD only. Like I said, there's just so many benefits from, like, like, like Jennifer said, THC CBD combination synergistically working together. So. Let's see how that works. You know? Sure. <laughs> and you know, and what Raymond was saying about the southern states being Bible states and everything like that. I've lived down in the southern states, and you know what? They like their cannabis just like anybody else. You know, and just because they they say you know they go to church on Sunday and they ask the first question out of their mouth is, "What church you belong to?" <laughs> and you know what? Those are some of the same people that you go mud bogging with and smoke your cannabis with, you know? And speaking of... Well, you know, I, I, I think that it's also um, a factor of, of what generation you come from. Because I noticed that the stigma that was created for, let's say, um, people in like their 60s today, you know, people yeah. that are prime candidates for a lot of medical marijuana use, um, they're afraid that they're doing something bad even when they get prescribed, you know, conservative folks. I actually ran into a lady that I had to have a conversation with and 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 inform her and educate her about, you know, eating your medication and the different ways to administer it, you know. She had no idea. For sure. And you know the thing is is that um a lot of our our um older folks are wise. So if you just start talking to them about, you know, regular what's going on, they it it's not so much of a uh, of a jump for them to change their opinion if they hear a, they're oh I'm hearing a lot of this on you know on the news what what is this about they they really people are really open minded if you just take the time to sit down and start talking to people one on one it's all about awareness and education yep. well speaking of awareness and education we have somebody on the line our caller is Tim Tim what's your question this is Jennifer hello hi um <laughs> hi um I just wanted to um, just make a quick comment. Sure. Um, basically, I'm really excited um, for everything that's going on within the um, the community. Um, it's really exciting at this point, and I'll just basically like to add that um, the starting of this week just besides being it's also red chromosomes the, um, disorder awareness week as well. So, um, in other words, I'll. Um, 
if you have any friends, family, any, um, just it, anything you could basically um, spread awareness to concerning um, chromosome, uh, red chromosome disease disorder mm-hmm. would be uh, definitely a good help. And along with, um, just like you mentioned earlier, um, other genetic um, diseases um, such as Ehlers Danlos Syndrome, lupus, um, which was all in May, uh, which is passed. But um, if anyone that's listening could basically, um, you know, learn it to or thin about the signs of um, of um, of these genetic mutations, uh, it would definitely help. And I just wanted to point one thing out too: sure. is um, the, the importance of this community. Um, you see, if it wasn't for um, such thing as this community, as this um, uh, as we can, even in the it's this very beginning stages. You know, I wouldn't have been diagnosed with this condition that I have. I came to um, the first, I came to the meeting, and guess what? I bumped into somebody who had, um, you know, who after this meet, after he spoke, I just walked up to him and he just gave me the right information that I have been looking for all my life. I I you know, remember I've been that going through surgery since I was age fifteen, and I'm- none of these doctors in the valley were able to basically um, give me any information towards where to look for together. That was it was at a patient's meeting um with We Can. It was a patient's first meeting and I, I, I remember that. Uh you talked to another member of the community and he kind of told you all of the symptoms. And several times since then I've seen that you have the symptoms up on your uh, up on your personal Facebook site. And, and basically, it, it's not really anything overt. It's just that you're more bendy than normal. And Ehlers Downlow Syndrome is a is a, a rare genetic um, disorder that you should be aware of. And it just, it it almost lets you do contortionist things with your, with your joints. Um, they're hypermobile. And, but it also causes a lot of tears and a lot uh, a lot of hurt um, in in the joints um, and and other and other symptoms. So just to be aware of um, these genetic disorders and these rare, rare genetic diseases, this is the the awareness week for that. Thank you for bringing that up, Tim. Oh yeah, and I also want to say a special thanks to um, everyone that joined in the cause to call in um, Senate, um, Senate Joe Hex office. Last week, um, uh, for basically to help, um, you know, um, basically um, the victory that basically we're all enjoying right now. Um, I'll basically just like to give a special thanks to. Thank yes, thank you everybody for calling in. Uh, thank you for taking actions and calling your representatives. Without people on the ground that say that they care, then the then the government will just do whatever. That they want, and, pa- and without people standing up. To, um, and a sorry, excuse me, and a special thanks to Vote Hemp because they're the ones that actually um, launched that whole um, awareness campaign for this, and I was able to basically tap into it and also share it with the rest of the community as well. And just for that, I would like to thank them because they basically keep everyone on their feet to, um, you know, to what is going on and what needs to be done. And that's what I would like to see more in this community is, is basically um, everyone coming together. And when it's time for action, we all take action regardless of how we feel about each other. And, you know, because at the end of the day, okay. honestly, we're all just one community. So um, and one, I'd just like to say one more thing is um, one um, one person that was left um, um to me by during the weekend's first um, um, symposium at the Alexis Park was by a speaker named um, Dan Rush. And, and in, in these words that he said, I will never remember people. Oops, it sounds okay. like we lost some there. Sorry. Well, about that. I'd like to direct all of you guys toward Facebook, um, Lady Rako and the Sin City Prophets. I want to see you guys out at First Friday next week is Election Day, so vote. Don't forget to vote. Vote, vote, vote. 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 Everybody, come yes. out, vote. County Commissioners, vote. City Council, make sure your voices are heard. So, till next week, see you then. Be the change that you seek. <laughs>